Welcome back to another video in our Ask the Roofer series or our guest series, if you will. I'm here with Dave Edwards from Keller Williams. Keller Williams. Um, you work up in the Huntersville area, but not you're not stuck in the Huntersville area like a lot of um, Mooresville realtors are. You work North Carolina, Greater Charlotte. That's correct. Just not across the border in South Carolina, right? That's correct. That's that's my limit. Don't go south of the border. <laughs> um, Dave is, is really good at, at what he does as an agent, especially on buying and selling because you used to work in construction. You've done a lot of renovation and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. you have hands-on practical knowledge of, you know, hey, this is good, this is not, or maybe seeing buyer, seeing, understanding what an inspector is looking at or, or bringing up and simple solutions for that. Um, what would you tell someone who's selling their house and it's not specific to the point or Mooresville obviously but what would you tell someone who's selling their house to have a better opportunity to have a leg up on the houses around them or just overall be prepared for that process well a seller is sometimes under the assumption that it's a seller's market and that yeah. may very well be but that doesn't mean that they have carte blanche to just sell it at whatever price in any <laughs> condition they want yeah um, so to eliminate stress, you want to prepare today for the sale tomorrow. So right. part of that means that you want to get some of the issues that would come up in a second round of negotiation, the repairs. Um, so if a roof, for example, has some issues or there is some minor damage in the drywall uh, or a wall needs to be painted, or maybe we need to simply take things out of the house and make it more salient uh, to mm -hmm. a prospective buyer. Um, those are all things that they can begin working on today in preparation for that house. Not wait for the tomorrow. inspector to catch it and be yeah. like, hey, do this stuff. By the time an inspector catches it, they're going to be putting certain verbiage into their inspection reports that says, for example, uh, we need a uh, licensed contractor to come back and address this issue. Whereas if you know you have the issue today, you could call a handyman out or you could do the work repairs yourself yep. ahead of time and resolve it for minimal money, minimal headache uh, before you get forced into a situation where you got to say yes or no to a more formal response. Gotcha. You sp we, we talked a little bit before the video like we always do. You were talking before and it was a great point. I never thought of it this way, but when you have a p potential prospective buyer come in, they're looking at the house. Um, kind of as how it relates to them where someone who lives there has built the house, painted the house, carpeted the house in a way that reflects their own personality. Yeah. So what can somebody do to combat that or prepare for m more people to come in, kind of prepare for a broad range of people to see their house and actually connect to it? One of the most frequent situations we see are people who are selling their home and they're downsizing uh, or they're moving on uh, to a larger home. So whatever style that you have as an owner, that is reflected in the personality of the furniture and the color selection, color of the carpets, the all deer of heads on the wall, the deer heads on the <laughs> wall. Um, and so that may or may not be appealing to all the buyers out there. You want to make it appear as broad as possible to as large an audience of prospective buyers as possible. A clue to, to pull from is what we call the pottery barn uh, look. And what is it? that is appealing about Pottery Barn? Well, they're successful because it's simple in design, elements of rustic. We are no longer a formal society, and so mm -hmm. formal rooms uh, have less value than they used to have yep. before. Um, so that goes, in, that also uh, has value in terms of the, the, the style that you have, the color selection. A lot of warm earthen tones, rustic feel, yeah. yeah. Uh, gray is a color that I never thought I'd s see in homes, but that has become a new warm really? tone in the, in the houses. Wow. Um, and it's very hot. So um, a lot of the younger generation coming in to buy a home, mm -hmm. that's what they're looking for. And so if you can reverse your perspective a little bit as an owner of a home, to look at it from how a buyer might, how it might be appealing to a buyer, then you're better served and you can prepare for that. Do you see that hit like different geographic areas? Like whereas uptown and condos, you'll have like the chic industrial kind of look and oh, then much so. out, outside you see a lot of the, of the warmer earth and. Yeah, it's, it's fun actually to be showing properties in the new condominiums that have been built in, mm -hmm. in downtown because you, you have two story levels with all the, everything exposed and uh, and the views of, of Charlotte are just phenomenal um, and that is that appeals to a certain buyer uh, obviously affluent who has the ability to afford that mm -hmm. uh, you compare that to a more traditional home 
perhaps they've got a family uh, and yep. their price point is in the 200s as opposed to the 2 million, uh, <laughs> all of a sudden taste can, can be dramatically different. Yeah, there's one bedroom condos there that are much more than my <laughs> three bedroom, four bedroom house <laughs> in the <laughs> suburbs of Mint Hill. Um, so yeah, so knowing your client and, and what they like can help guide you on what you're showing them and it will help guide your sellers like, hey, this house or this area, you're going to cater more towards this demographic or another. Right. Yeah. And everybody's unique. And, and as, as your parents probably told you, they told me, God gave us two ears and one mouth. So, <laughs> so listen more than you talk. And, and it starts with listening to the client, whether it's the buyer side or the seller side. Yeah. So for the sellers specifically, knowing their area, who they're going to um, attract that area, like you said, whether it's families or, or single people or, you know, couples with no children, kind of knowing where they're at geographically and the demographic they'll be reaching can help them prepare the, how their house looks and feels when you come into it. Obviously not having a mess. And uh, we've talked before with real, realtors about stagers and just make sure stuff's in the right place. The garage is not trashed. It's cleaned out and ready to see. I frequently uh, employ a stager on yep. because it's helpful to have the expertise of a third party mm -hmm. uh, in giving us support um, and zeroing in quickly on the things that can be done. You can take a piece of furniture that you have in this room that may be too much in that room from a spatial standpoint and move it into another room. And by doing that, you've created space in one room and added uh, a chair of value or a piece of furniture of value in another room. Uh, it's simple things that they see that as homeowners, we've just sort of been living with all of yep. our lives and we just sort of take for granted where it's, where it's placed. Or something that you wouldn't necessarily see or I wouldn't see because we're experts in our own fields and our own industries. And they, again, are an expert in their industry and employing them to come stage that to sell quicker. I've I've heard many times recently where people get over market value, you know, three, four, five percent because their home was properly staged and properly shown. Yes. Um, especially right now, and this is very time specific, we are in somewhat of a seller's market still where, like you say, it's not like, hey, just name my price and I get whatever I want. But if you properly stage it, you properly show it, you can get a, a very good return on on or over the value of your home. Absolutely, there are three key areas that I focus on. Um, one is the kitchen. That is your number one space <laughs> in a house. Yep. Uh, Can I the, guess the second? Master bath? Master bath would be number two, absolutely. That whole awesome. master suite. Yep. And then the third one is a little bit broader and it's what I call the living spaces or the comfort uh, spaces. Mm -hmm. So that can actually mean not a living room uh, or a family room. It really means those spaces outside of the house, like a patio, yep. screen porch, fire pit, Hard things that it's a destination within the house to go and relax. Uh, a house is, is not only about comfort, it's about lifestyle. And so we want to have that space to go out there and put our feet up around a fire pit, perhaps, yep. or be bug free during the, the, the warmer months. <laughs> while you drink uh, your coffee in the while, morning. <laughs> absolutely. Not mosquitoes. And so those things are the three wows, as I call them. So the first thing that I do with my clients is go through and take a look at your kitchen. Um, what can we do? Light is our friend. Uh, how do we lighten it up? How do we l lessen the things and objects that we have on the counter so that it creates more space? Perhaps there's a corner underneath uh, a cabinet that's dark. How mm -hmm. can we lighten that up? Um, take clutter off of refrigerators. <laughs> um, clean. Um, and uh, lighting above the cabinets, below the cabinets, yep. is one of the simplest ways to, to take a, a house that has older styles like the old white cabinets uh, and distract the eye and put the focus it's like makeup you know you're, you're accentuating the the positive aspects of that room yeah um, so that's then, that's a focus that I put in place. and it would be a lot easier to either add some kind of backsplash or even just change the paint color bring attention there off the cabinets and exactly. it's a heck of a lot cheaper than actually replacing all your cabinets or even your cabinet doors as a lot of people do a seller will often be budget conscious oh yeah so you can start and, and say here's some of the things you can do and here's some anticipated costs for that mm -hmm. it doesn't cost a lot to to paint it doesn't cost a lot to put lighting um, now there are different extremes as to whether you call an electrical contractor to do your lighting or whether you try to do it yourself with a little plug in the wall. Yep. But all of those are options. Yep.
that's really good information. Now, we're before we close out, you talked a little bit about um, dealing with insurance and roof replacements in that process. Once you have a house getting ready to go to market, you've experienced um, roofs that have hail damage getting turned down. Yes. Can, you, can you talk a little bit about that? This, this is something I'd never seen before, just in my limited experience. It's not unusual to have a roof in bad in, in bad situation. Okay, so the shingles are are broken. Um, there's hail damage, and you need obviously the expertise of a of an expert such as yourself to <laughs> first validate whether that damage is there. Then the next hurdle is the insurance company, which is the solution to the problem. Yep. Uh, if somebody wants to pay seventy five hundred dollars or twelve thousand five hundred dollars, depending on the size of the roof, I mean it's it can can range a great deal. Um, a, you need to know how much it's going to cost. B, the insurance company is going to look to deny that if they can. Because they don't want to spend money. They don't want to spend the money. Uh, but the seller who owns that house has the ability to, to, to address that while they still own it. And so when you have a prospective buyer before you have a prospective buyer, if you know you've got a roof that has some issues, deal with it now before it yep. becomes a problem. Because it could be a showstopper for a prospective buyer. That's going to be... That's your primary system in a house. That's the, the thing that protects us from the elements, is the roof. And so if it can be dealt with, now's the time to do that. And at that point too, if the buyer gets involved, they wanna see every bit of that process. They wanna know the contractor. They wanna know you know how much was spent, what you did, what you didn't do. They wanna have a they say. They wanna pick out the shingles. Exactly. Um, so it can it can gum, gum up the works, if yeah. you will. Um, yeah, we we see that a lot on our side as far as inspections and we'll do inspections for real estate agents all the time and we don't charge to come out in in the seller's side because they want to be ready when the yeah. when the buyer comes when the home inspector comes they want to hand them a report and say hey this was just inspected this is what they found this is what they fixed this is their you know bill of good health if you will um, preventatively because a lot of times that will help home inspectors they'll obviously still look at the roof to a degree but I don't know any that get on the roof Actually, I do know one. I know one that gets on the roof, but most of them don't. So most of them don't. That's correct. If they see, hey, if it's a, if it's a, a very easy to understand report of, hey, this is what we found. We did find these issues. We addressed them this way. Everything's good to go for the next five years. They can obviously do their own quick inspection, but take that as you know, we're we're good there. And a buyer can also take that and see, hey, this has already been fixed, and it's not called out, called out to have a roofer come look at the roof and creates a level of comfort and value for the seller because it's one less thing they have to deal with. The, it's, the issues have been addressed and that's, yep. that's something that can be sold to a prospective buyer yep. uh, is that the roof has been inspected, has been uh, repaired and that's, that's very reassuring. So it's, it's one less worry for a buyer. Great. One more reason to buy the home. <laughs> awesome. Well, Dave, thanks for being with us. We'll, well, thank you. we'll get you back again to talk. Thanks for watching again, guys. If you have questions for me or for Dave and we'll link up your information in the in the Thank text you. of the of the post um, if you have questions for either of us put them in the comments we'll answer them or if they're directed towards dave he'll answer them as well so thanks again thanks for watching another episode of our ask the roofer video series if you like the content please like share or subscribe here on facebook or on our youtube channel whichever way you prefer to see it and if you have questions we'd love to get your input see what you want to learn about and and do our best to help explain those things to you